a lot of them are taken with a TG6, which is even better than Joe's camera, but it does matter who's using it. <laughs> so um, I suppose part of the, the, the point here is like the other stuff that the lads are talking about, you're getting nice, pretty pictures. Now you can get nice, pretty pictures um, of crabs and I've stolen some photos that um, Maja has sent me before to use at the end, but that's generally not what I'm trying to do. But one, one of the real reasons why you want to take some photos of crabs is um, we don't have an awful lot of records of them, even some of the really common ones. Um, and there's about 150 species in Ireland, but like none of the books really cover them. And a lot of it is because um, they're sort of fiddly. Um, so like decapods and particularly the procurians, the true crabs, they tend to be under-recorded in, in relation to their um, sort of conspicuousness. So I'm going to have to do a bit of biology. So just for any of the um, parts referring to it. So the, the claws of the chile are what you see referred to in the book. Um, the carapace is the body of the crab. So um, it's very obvious in the true crabs. And then the walking legs or periopods, you sometimes see them described. And then the dactylus of the final walking leg is that section there. It's the final section of the rear leg. And that's particularly important in... Um, the swimming crabs for identification. So one of the problems you have with IDing crabs is that generally, if you're gonna, have, you know, if you came up with a bunch of rules of thumb for identifying crabs, one of the big ones you'd use, it'd be size, but you obviously get juveniles and then smaller crabs. And the while they tend to be fully formed, as you can see there with that lovely um, edible crab on the left, um, at a very small size. They can be very variable in color, um, even at the same site. Um, so those two um, shore crabs. And then you get stuff like that lobster um, on the right that Tony got a photo of is missing both of his claws. So at a glance, maybe it could, um, if, if you're going with a very um, ID guide sort of approach to IDing um, crustaceans, you could get very confused. But I suppose part of the thing that Joe and um, Maja covered is that um, a lot of the descriptions that you find, not so much on websites, but certainly in books, um, are based on the old sort of Victorian era anatomical take it out, chop it up, and it's lying dead in a lab. And you can use colour to identify things in the water. I always find when you're thinking of crabs in, in, in terms of getting, you don't want to get lost, but you know, is it living in a shell, right? It's a hermit crab, it's not any of the other ones. And once it's into a hermit crab, you're into a whole world of pain. And then in terms of the free living ones, you look at the carapace, is it longer than it's broad? And if it's longer than it's broad, then it's a lobster or it's one of the fiddly crabs um, and if the carapace is broader than it's long, then you have a true crab, so you're into the swimming crabs and things like that. And then, like I said, if it's longer than it's broad, it's either a lobster. Um, if it's significantly longer than it's broad, or if it's sort of triangular shaped, you've got a spider crab of just some description, or you've probably got a masked crab if it's something like living buried in the sand. So in terms of lobsters, I don't think there's many um, issues in terms of identifying lobsters. I suppose one big thing you have to say in terms of photographing them is don't get too close, as Tony did here. Or actually, I might have taken that photo. That seems like something I would do. Um, but um, in terms of um, the visuals, they are obviously something that are um, very prone to sort of taking wide-angled, lovely shots. Um, and you can see here with the crayfish, Crayfish doesn't have any claws, that's how you distinguish it from a lobster, but they're so big that there, there wouldn't be any, any need to worry about it. Um, the only thing I would say is when you're, uh, when you're taking photos of lobsters, um, you want to um, try, if you can, in terms of identification, get in the two prongs there. I don't know if you can see my mouse at the front, because um, that's how you distinguish between a... American lobster and a European lobster. Now, I don't think we have European or American lobsters here at the moment, but we, we can't be we can't be fully sure yet. And then the spider crabs are much easier. You get them doing interesting things at times, but when you're trying to identify the spider crabs, the um, 
the key point is the um the the front of the rostrum so the two projectors so there so those two projections there that's how you identify it as a um a large spider crab the maja brachydactyla or magus conata depending on the books and um, that seems to be a genetic question now rather than a um an identification question so um I, I wouldn't worry about it whatever your book says and then in the sea toad again you can see here it's again it's the front of the crab you're focusing on and you can see that's just one solid piece there's no uh, there's no rostrums it's just fused and that's how you di distinguish them and you only have two species of um large spider crabs in Ireland. So we're already up to, um, what, four species that we can identify fairly easily. In terms of the small spider crabs, they're good for taking photos and um, sort of what to get in close and, and, and focus on them. But in terms of identification, like what you're looking, what you're trying to look for is you're trying to look for um, the shape of the rostrum here. And you can see even in this individual, even in a very close up photo, you can't see it, it's covered in sponge. So in general, the only way to identify that crab will be to take it home and scrape off all the, all the sponge, um, which you, you obviously can't do with a photograph. In terms of the hermit crabs, um, there's 18 species of hermit crabs in Irish waters, believe it or not. Um, but generally, you're not going to be able to um, identify hermit crabs to species. Um, the key to identifying hermit crabs, if you want to key them out, if you want to find a book that identifies them, is you need to look at the relative size of the claws and you need to look at the antennae. So what you really need to do is you need to get like right down into the face of the, of the crab and get a head on photo showing the claws and the antennae. Um, which is obviously very difficult with this uh, with the smaller um, individuals. So that's that's the sort of photo you want. Is you can see, um, you see the claw, you can see the antennae, but that's also a bit of a, a giveaway because the largest um, hermit crab, the Pagaris bernardus, um, is the one that gets to the really big sizes. So once it's above um, maybe ten centimeters in less in length, it's definitely that, and it can't be anything else. Um, so that's um, typically what, what you'd be seeing when you're seeing really big hermit crabs. Joe's already mentioned this in terms of the anemone, so I'll come back to the crab. Uh, this is, I think this is um, Maj's photo actually, uh, but you can see it is a really lovely anemone, but um, in terms of identifying the crab to species without the anemone, it's virtually impossible, but you're highly unlikely to find them without it. Um, and to be honest, while that's a lovely photo, they're quite easy to identify, even from a distance. Um, uh, if you can get any sort of photo on it, the anemone is very apparent. This one, in this one, it sent out the purple, um, um, sort of, I, I, I can't remember what it is, but it's a, it's a defensive mechanism that, it, um, that the anemone releases um, those sort of, those strings that Joe um, talked about earlier, and um, so that they're coming out from the crab. And then I would, uh, I couldn't find a photo and I need to record this and put it up online. So uh, I had to leave scouring the internet. But 17 of the species of hermit crabs you get in Ireland are right-handed. There's one left-handed. Um, all of the records are from the Biomar survey. And um, even though I know we've seen it down in Waterville um, in Kerry, so I obviously forgot to record it. Um, but if you see a left-handed um, hermit crab, it's a uh, Diogenes uh, pugilator, and it can't be any other um, hermit crab. So that's that's another good one. But beyond those three, you really are restricted to just hermit crabs. And you can get very good photos um, like that in, in close-up of the head. And then, um, unfortunately, you just have to go with a scientific key. There's no good photo ID books available at the moment for crustaceans. Um, but the one that you can do some work on um, on your own is the swimming crabs. And it's not as difficult as um, the dichotomous key would suggest. So um, all of the swimming crabs have um, this, this back leg is um, flattened. 
um, into a swimming paddle, except for in the shore crab where it's just flattened, but it's not expanded into the swimming paddle. But that's the sort of um, things you want to get in. Uh, you get it. The velvet swimming crab is obviously very conspicuous. Um, probably could be confused with the wrinkled swimming crab here, but um, so the wrinkled swimming crab could probably be confused with a velvet, but not the other way around. And you're sort of looking for the purple markings and stuff like this. But when you're photographing crabs, this is this is really the ideal. You get the you have the whole carapace. You can see both claws, and you can see the um, the dactylus on the on the rear walk on the rear leg and um, very clearly. So again, um, to I, I'm going to use the Latin names because a lot of these people use like harbor crab um, for at least three of these species. Um, so it just gets really confusing. But for uh, Leo Cassinus uh, depurator, what you're looking for is um, it has a purple tinge to the um, rear walking, uh, to the paddle and the rear walking leg. Now it's not, um, it's not perfectly purple in that photograph, but it, it, it's always there. If you get it, it's that species. If it's not present, it's not that species. I've never come across an individual and um, even molted um, like that guy was that where, where that um, uh, purple wasn't apparent. In terms of uh, Leosa carcinus corrigatus, so this is the wrinkled crab. So actually, this is where um, a bit of a rub can come in. But if, if you if you rub along um, the back of that crab, if, if they let you, um, they'll um, you, you can feel um, uh, striations across the back. It, it just got sort of furrows there. Um, you can see from that photo that it. it is taking a good chunk out of my other finger while I'm holding it, so I wouldn't recommend that as the uh, as the uh, as the pinching mechanism. But again, um, if you were to check in um, one of the books, the shape um, and that median ridge there on the uh, rear walking leg are diagnostic as well. Um, these guys I really love, um, Leo Carcinus navigator. You'll see them um, elsewhere as Leo, Leo Carcinus uh, arcuatus. Um, I don't know which one is actually the accepted name at this stage, but you can use either. But it's the arch fronted crab. So they're very hard to ID unless you can get a grab hold of them because they're very flighty, even by crab standards. Um, but what you're looking for is that the rear leg is flattened and expanded into a paddle. Um, unlike in the um, shore crab. And then it's sort of difficult to see here, but you can see here, sort of zoomed in, it's per it's almost perfectly flash between the eyes there. Um, so you can do that with a, with a photo, if you can get a good photo and then zoom in, or literally if you can grab one, just pick up a, cra pick up a crab, have a quick look and like that, if you've got, a, if it's smooth carapace in between the two, uh, in the, between the eyes, um, that's what it is. And then the shore crab is a swimming crab, um, but if you zoom right in on this grainy photograph, you can see here the back dactylus is flattened, but it, it, they haven't, it's not expanded into a swimming paddle for some reason. But that's the most common crab you see in most areas. And, and you can see there, you can see the ridges um, on the carapace in between the eyes. Velvet swimming crabs are lovely. You can take some lo lovely photos of them and there's no real trick to photographing them to identify them. You're looking at the, it's the um, purple lines, the red eyes and um, the shape of the, the dactylus is, is diagnostic as well. Um, edible crabs, I don't think there's any real trick to <laughs> photographing them to identify it. They're, they're very distinctive. There's nothing really that looks anything like them. And, and as you saw earlier from the photo, um, e even as like extremely small juveniles, they, they have that diagnostic shape. The Galatea then, the um, squat lobsters. Um, this would be one of the ones where again, I, I sort of query some of the stuff you see in the books. So the Strigosa, the, the, um, the red one, it's got this lovely red color and it's got these lovely blue um, stripes on it. Um, I'm sure the other people here could show you some lovely photos of them, but that's not what I'm going for. I'm just, I'm always just going for ID. Um, versus the olive squat lobster, which is, you know, a, a dull brown color. Um, now, if you 
get very close macro shots of them, you can see they can, there, there's a bit of iridescence or something going on there. I couldn't, couldn't dig out the photo um, someone has of them. Um, but if you are ever wondering about whether or not you're looking at a, a squat lobster, um, count the legs, because um, the last pair of legs are hooked, are retracted and hooked in under the under the body there. So you can see they're um, one, two, three, four. They're missing. They're missing a pair of legs. But um, those two species are very, very easy to sell apart. There are a whole bunch of other Galatea that are red and small. But when you say small, they're extremely small. You're, you're talking like fifteen millimeter sizes, stuff like that. Um, and it's highly unlikely you'd be able to get a photo of a crevice dwelling. Um, Galatea of that size that you'd be able to reliably um, ID it to species. Um, so I'll just finish up by, I will say, I, I focused more on the identification than the, the lovely pictures. So these are uh, Maja's pictures that I've stolen. Um, she sent me them before for something. I can't remember, but you can take lovely photos of crabs. Um, because I don't take lovely photos, um, doesn't mean you can't. But um, like like I was saying, Joe has the same camera as me and takes nicer photos. Like a lot of it is about um, learning to use your own camera. That's Stranford Lock. The Stranford Lock, is it? Yeah. So many of them, isn't there? Yeah, they're literally because there was lots of mussels, they were having dinner. A meal. That's killery. Killery. Uh, yeah. Um, you can see, like, you take if you get so if you get lovely, um, if you take nice photos of crabs, you get nice photos. But that's not what I recommend. This one, I, I love this one. This, this really, um, you, you you could you could probably talk through, through this one better than I, I could. But but this is, I think this is stunning. I think, like, you can see all the hairs. You can see every. You can see it to its soul. <laughs> um, but. Uh, and you can in see the sponge on it. It's it's no, it's it's not the sponge. What is it? In the front. Oh, it's in there is or something, isn't it? See the front and top of tentacles. But in terms of ID, you know, totally useless. Zero out of zero out of ten. <laughs> I'm just thinking as you listen to the presentation and you you get Joe talking about dual enemies, you're you're obviously the same way with molesting uh, crabs. And even even the even the you know the much maligned velvet swim crab can have his have his moments. That's your photo again, actually. I think. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's in Killery, and I've seen them eat uh, anemones as well. I have a picture of them eating anemones. They eat anything. So um, yeah, so the bad photos were me, were me and Tony, and the nice photos were um, Francis, Phil, and Maja. Um, 